determining acute kidney injury after heart operations using cardiopulmonary bypass. Dr. Kolesny. Thank you, dear chairman. Uh, good morning, the audience. Um, I would like just to to introduce a little bit of uh, uh, drawbacks of the monitoring of uh, kidney function by uh, creatinine. As we know, uh, creatinine can can actually quite lately uh, demonstrate the acute kidney uh, injury. So uh, it's, we are in a constant urge for, to find any better mark, uh, marker. So one point, uh, actually one reason for that lies in the fact that um, the, the effective estimated glomerular filtration rate has to drop by 50% in order to be detected or seen in uh, rise of creatinine. And the second, we have uh, immediate uh, post-operative uh, hemodilution, which also kind of uh, affects uh, our detection limits. So uh, definitely we, we don't go to, um, or don't want to go to the number four, level five grade of intervention. So uh, we would like, uh, pointing the aim of the study, to detect early kidney failure and possibly to take any preventive measures. So uh, cysteine C is a common molecule uh, being seen in the organism and uh, it's a successful surrogate for a glomerular filtration rate. Actually, the late, uh, latest studies, they, they demonstrate it's a little bit of a superior uh, performance. On the other hand, uh, Engal, is uh, another uh, glycoprotein uh, that's uh, specially secreted in the tubules, uh, renal tubules, and also associated, uh, sorry, uh, by the immune response in the organism. So uh, how, appro how, how did we approach uh, our, our defined goals? We did it prospectively. First, uh, in the first phase, in uh, 48 patients, uh, and then 43 finally enrolled in the uh, study group. And uh, importantly, uh, importantly to note, that we, we selected just those that had the preserved kidney function preoperatively. These are our exclusion criteria. So definitely, we didn't want to, to include all those that uh, received radio contrast agent uh, 22 hours prior to surgery, but still debatable, maybe should be 48 hours or even 72. And uh, the others are as follows and listed here. Uh, we defined all the markers before, then at the termination of the cardiopulmonary bypass, then two hours after CPB, which corresponded to the ICU, um, approximately ICU admission, and then 24 hours and 40 hours post-op. And uh, then, of course, evaluated accordingly with the proper statistical measures. Uh, the assays are as defined here, so coming from Siemens, BioVendor, Germany, and uh, this one, the plasma angle, actually, is a quite a new one and uh, developed by Bioporto in Gentofte, Denmark. The definition uh, has, been, has been also kind of a briefly described in a previous, uh, previous presentation. So we defined AQ1, 2, and uh, ha haven't met actually AQ3 in our group. So let's see our demographic results. No differences in uh, demographic and anthropometric data between non-AQ and AQ group. And also, just a uh, borderline, or actually this is a stati statistically uh, significant um, difference between transfusion between non-ACI and ACI favoring ACI group, which is actually expected according to the literature. So now, um, as we see, the creatinine uh, at highly significant level uh, rises in AQ1, then reaches the plateau, uh, and rises excessively in AQ2 group. So hopefully when, when we come to AQ3, uh, we'll see more, you know, on the, uh, uh, more information on that uh, level. According to Engar, 
we see that uh, it has early peak, highly st uh, statistically significant again um, between the AQ2 and the AQ1, and not discriminating between, between, uh, between AQ1 and uh, AQ2, which also corresponds to clinical outcomes. And the cystatin, cystatin C, uh, it's interesting that uh, the preoperative measures could demonstrate the significant differences, again, in highest grade AQ group, and uh, fail to do so uh, just, you know, the first, the first two samples, uh, I mean, taking the first two samples and then demonstrating the activity uh, differential of AQ failure in only on the second post-operative day. So uh, in estimating the efficiency of that model and also anticipating its uh, limited number of patients, we could, uh, we could see that now at this level, this is a kind of a good, uh, good model, so we are still not at the excellent level. Um, to conclude, we would like to uh, stress that uh, we had significantly elevated uh, grades of uh, AQ that were shown by preoperative uh, uh, differences in cystatin C. Uh, next, creatinine and the engal were elevated actually two hours after CPB, which was much earlier than uh, reported before. And also, uh, there was no uh, difference according to cystatin C after the operation. So maybe uh, just an uh, additional notion, uh, notion that came from the literature uh, recently published. The acute kidney injury actually has been associated with the perioperative atrial fibrillation. And in that aspect, uh, I think that markers will play some role in the hopefully successfully discriminating those that are inclined to possibly the development of atrial fibrillation. And uh, we could probably, in the future perspective, better define uh, the mechanisms. So we, we strongly believe that markers then uh, a kind of uh, uh, deserve our further devotion. Thank you very much. Questions? Do you have any uh, theory as to the correlation between kidney injury and atrial fibrillation? I know you showed those historical things, but. Uh, actually, that's what we are doing now in the largest group uh, up to now. We, we have a group of uh, 120 patients, and uh, this, uh, this hopefully will enable us to do that. Because in 40 patients, the, the, we, could, we could, I mean, six patients in AQ1, six in two, right. uh, we, we couldn't see any difference. Can you speculate? I mean, is it something to do with the electrolyte potassium imbalance, or uh, what, what do you? I think basically, um, and according to the literature, is going to be the um, renin angiotensin in aldosterone axis. And we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you with the further information. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, the next talk is by Dr. Omolchenko from uh, Norwurst Brisky, Russia.